Oi oi ratbags, it's Jade, welcome to a special survival show. Today we're going to be covering all the latest that's been going on after my little mini break with my kids celebrating some birthdays. Anywho, survival, let's go. Art Survival Evolved, Conan Exiles, Daisy, big major updates for all three of these games. What's it all going to contain? Then we'll take a look at some other, other games that I've really been following and trying to hype up because I think they're pretty good. Like Drake Hollow, like The Survivalists and Last Oasis. All got updates of future content coming in that looks pretty decent. And we're going over a little bit about Grounded. The test live servers are getting updated and looks like we're going to receive some big chunky content at last. Plus a little look at a game called Salt 2, well it's a sequel to the original and yeah, that's pretty much what we're covering in today's survival show. So don't forget to like, make sure you're subscribed, timestamps are there to skip to what you want to hear. Let's go, it's the survival show. So the next big update from DayZ 1.10 is hopefully going to be coming in the next couple of weeks. Now this is a little bit more rapid than I thought they might push it out. At the start of the year they planned and said they weren't going to be having as many updates as they did last year due to them pretty much getting rid of half of their development team for the game. But the content updates that have dropped have been some way going towards making it an actual full experience that many, many people have always wanted from DayZ. And part of that is being able to break your leg. Leg fractures are returning to the game and this is available right now on the Xbox experimental servers and PC. You're gonna to need to make an improvised splint if you want to fix it. If you fall, if you're in combat, stepping on a bear trap, or even getting out of a car while it's moving, you might break your leg. You'll be forced into a prone state and the injured state is automatically triggered. So it will start slowing you down. If you don't have a splint available and you don't actually apply it, you'll start collapsing into unconsciousness as soon as you put any pressure on it. Now your leg can heal over time, but it is much better if you do indeed put a splint on it. Temperatures are getting reworked too. Instead of it just being two basic temperatures between night and day, they are adding a little bit more in terms of either warm afternoons or cold mornings depending on what time of year it is. This will be a server setting so you could have a frozen game if you wanted to make it incredibly hard for players. So it's an interesting mechanic they're putting back in. You'll also now gain a heat buff when you campfire and you sit there telling your stories have you avoided one toxic streamer. You will now get a little warming buff when you leave. You'll also be able to tell how well insulated you are by looking at your inventory from now on. And they've changed wetness as well. Even if you've got waterproof items, they can still get a little bit damp. And it just pretty much gives you an overall level. So all equipment will have this kind of gauge. And so it will lead up to a total amount of how maybe dry you are. So it's pretty good. Apparently they are adding some more stuff as well. They're going to be adding better improvised shelters, new fabric which can be used to replace stuff like tents. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more added in the coming days. I keep threatening to jump back in. It's been probably over a year now since I really dived back into DayZ. Maybe it's about time I shut up and actually get a live stream going on. No final word on when the update's going to drop for everyone. PlayStation 4 fans, obviously you haven't got experimental servers. So you'll be very keen on knowing that date. But as soon as we get one, I'll let you guys know. So you guys know I'm always keen to show you brand new stuff and not just talk about the biggest games going. Salt 2 is in development. Now Salt, the original game, was a nice little exploration game centered around being a kind of a pirate. Imagine Sea of Thieves, but maybe a little bit more along the lines of Roblox. I don't want to be harsh, but that's what it kind of felt like at times. Well, the developers have been working on Salt 2 and they've improved massively the visuals of the game. It's still got that colorful sort of cartoony style, but it does look like it's a little bit more serious in terms of like the weapon modeling and the actual characters themselves. While it still might seem a little bit basic to some people, they're looking to get this into early access and definitely it's gonna hopefully grow and evolve over there. Ever since Sea of Thieves had its pretty much horrible launch and then managed to just about redeem itself, there's definitely been a call for more pirate games. And with Atlas not being able to sustain a player base, mainly because they didn't really concentrate and actually work on a game for months on end, I think players are desperate still to play some more pirate games, particularly open world ones. So yeah, it's only a couple new pictures, but I thought I'd throw it in here. I'm going to be keeping track on this game in the future. So Conan Exiles has got a big update as well. As you can tell, these big survival games, which are the biggest on consoles at least, and definitely some of the biggest on PC, this is their winter and holiday content kind of plans. And Conan have not going to be left behind. They've got huge changes coming. Let's just hope it does eventually hit console a little bit sooner. Now we're going to go through some of the stuff they've added, but a quick note for Xbox players. Apparently since August, they've been having pretty much unforgivable crashes with memory running out. There's a lot of yada 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 from their producer, 
but pretty much it is addressing the situation and it is giving a bunch of details about, about why Xbox players have found playing the game such a chore with lots, so many crashes, so many problems and issues with wipes. Lots of people have had to reinstall the game and pretty much lost a lot of their progress. The bottom line is that they just said they missed it. They've done their best to keep things up going. They said they prioritised certain areas, particularly on console, and that there was lots of improvements that came with the Isla Sipta update for PC that they intended to actually put out on console. But when they started doing it and getting it ready, they realised there was still some certain problems happening, and so it really hasn't actually changed much. The bottom line, they've got another brand new port team coming on board to help them. Now, about six weeks ago, I came across a listing for Warp Digital, and they're pretty much a British UK uh, port team. They do a lot of work for console ports, and it looks like they're going to be helping out as an additional port team on top of the ones that Funcom have usually used. Now, a lot of the port team, a lot of the testers work out of Portugal and other places for Funcom. But it does look like they've added another batch now. So hopefully this means they are going to be working on stuff a little bit more and we will see improvements for console. Now in terms of what's actually new for Conan, well, it's a lot. There's definitely better people to go and watch the breakdown of this. Go and give Kyra on fire. A good friend of mine has helped me out on my channel. She's got all the lowdown on the latest stuff that's going on. And WAC4863 has also got the lowdown. Of course, as well as Firespark, who I like as well. But you guys know I try and shout out some of the smaller creators around the communities rather than the big guys. But in a nutshell, they're changing the crafting system. So if you're a console fan, you don't really want to delve into it until it actually starts hitting Xbox and PlayStation. They're pretty much taking it away that you always have to have the tier 4 thralls to get the pretty much best gear and items. So they're pretty much making variations of all the crafting benches a lot more. You're still going to need some of them thralls and they will be beneficial. But the new upgraded stations are going to do more of the work for you. They're also changing what's going on with some of the artisans and they're mixing up how you do fishing. A big component as well is being able to actually change and customise your character as well. They're calling this the economy update and you will be able to mix up your hair, change your tones. But you won't be able to actually change your race or your actual proper character itself I don't think. So that, alongside all the new crafting benches that you're going to be having access to, it really will be a big, huge economy update for the game. It's all designed to streamline recipe making to make it a little bit more easy and usable. They're adding 30 brand new dyes to the game as well, so if you want to colour stuff up, you're going to have loads of fun. And you can see all the different specialisations they've got going on too. So good stuff. Again, don't expect this on console anytime soon. As soon as we do get info about it either being finished or approaching ready for Xbox and PlayStation, I'll let you guys know. So Grounded has got their big huge update going live very soon and the test live servers are back and they're going to be going live on October the 26th, so pretty much tomorrow. I'm going to be giving you a recap of what to maybe expect. Their community manager has teased that it's pretty much going to be their biggest update to date. Does this mean we're finally going to see some of the underwater stuff that I showed you guys first when I leaked it, one of the first people to actually show you guys all the content, the weapons, the armour, the new creatures? Maybe, maybe, maybe. As I said to you guys recently in another Grounded video, I'm fully expecting them to say that they're not going to release an update this month, but it will begin at maybe an early part of November. Why? Because they've got the Halloween event that they still want to have until obviously the 31st. And now that they've just put up the test server, it doesn't really give them a lot of time to actually do anything if people find problems with the test server. So yeah, I'm calling it now. The update will not be ready this month. It might only be a few days difference, but I don't expect the grounded update to go live for everyone until the beginning of November. And I don't mind that, as long as it means it's going to be more stable, as that was one of the biggest problems with the last update we had. It was really unstable and a lot of players really got pissed off with it in them two weeks that they took to maybe get it all hot fixed and patched properly. But yeah, I'll be going over some stuff, maybe reminding you what to expect with future updates. I've still got plenty of content that I recorded before the devs took away the sneaky levels. So expect that very soon and I'll give you the lowdown. Obviously when the test servers go live tomorrow, I'll be showcasing everything brand new. So the survival is a cute little survival simulation style game, pretty much more like Don't Starve than anything else. Obviously it came out a couple of weeks ago and they've already got their plans laid out for the rest of the year and beyond. They're going to be adding more farming to the game, animal taming and breeding, new animals and enemies, weather, they're going to have more to craft to build, additional buffs, new items, new biomes, extra escapes, bosses and backpacks. 
you know what? This is a great, great amount of content. It's not like the survivalist doesn't have a lot to do already, but this is some great stuff that they're outlining. Now, I've said it's not all set in stone completely, but that's what they kind of hope for for the rest of this year and beyond. To help that, they've got their experimental servers running some new content and have just had their big update. They've changed and tweaked combat to make it more challenging. They've got more things going on with spawns of enemies. Lots of new combat quests been added. More lore quests have been going to appear in the stranger's shop. And overall, just a whole bunch of stuff, especially improvements to do with monkeys, which you can pretty much train up and get to go crafting or gathering, pretty much making recipes for you. So yeah, it's good stuff. I haven't really covered this game as much as I wanted to. It's just simply been too many games at the moment and too much stuff going on in real life. But I definitely want to keep revisiting it as I think it's a pretty cool game. So I would recommend it. If you see it on Switch, the Xbox or PS4, give it a shot. It's a co-op game, it's fun, and the devs obviously have big plans for it going forward. And there's a lot of stuff going on with so many games, including Drake Hollow 2. In the future, they are going to be adding more modifiers to the sandbox mode they just released. This will pretty much make it easier to adjust stuff. If you want enemies to be harder, you can make that happen. If you want to reduce the build costs, you can make it almost creative mode. If you want to turn off raids, you'll be able to do that in the future, or permadeath. This is some great stuff, and I really feel like this is the future of Drake Hollow, making it more and more roguelike with the additional modifiers, and that really gives people the freedom to play it how they want. They're also going to have some presets, though. If you don't want to fiddle about with that, they're going to have competitive, creative, Iron Man, classic, brawler, and strategist. After the gameplay modifiers have been added in the near future, they're going to be working on combat improvements. It's fair to say that Drake Hollow Combat is pretty simple. The animations for a lot of the items are simply just the same. And apart from the items themselves having better buffs or better attack abilities, combat does get pretty boring. So they're hoping to add something to it instead of it just being one button mashing, that there may be some variation. Maybe not Dark Souls level, but certainly something to give it a little bit more difference. It's so great stuff. I reckon they need to do this a little bit more visually though. But again, Drake Hollow, absolutely, out of all the games that have come out in the last couple of months, I would definitely recommend this one if you're a big survival fan. So our Survival Evolved had huge news in its community crunch and something that's been teased for a while now when we saw some pictures of little mantises, it looks like you're going to be able to breed a hell of a lot of the creatures and bugs in the game. This has been something that's never been able to happen for these creatures including the spiders, the mantises and of course wyverns which will be the really exciting news for a lot of people. Up until now only one DLC has allowed you to breed wyverns and that's the latest one, the Crystal Isles. Well now it looks like they're rolling that out to all wyverns across the game. So the spider, the bat, the moth, the scorpion, the alpha pleura and the mantis are all going to be breedable. This is all coming as part of the TLC update on November the 7th. They've also changed up a few other creatures. The Gigantosaurus now will take a lot less time to actually grow. Diplocolus is trying to be useful. They're giving it more health and more movement speed. And the Phylaco has added a slow draining bleed to its basic attack. The Megachelon is now available to breed on other maps. This is something I wanted to test out on the centre map. A massive giant sea turtle. Well now you'll be able to breed it because you can take it much deeper. And they've made it a little bit less harsh. You won't have to go as deep to breed them. And yes, Wyverns are now breedable apart from Zombie Wyverns. Megalodon are going through some changes. Adding a pack bonus to the sharks pretty much. You don't want to be in water when they start attacking you. The Jaboa has been pretty much made a backpack just like some of the other smaller creatures like the Bulldog. And the Ankylosaurus has been given another buff for weight reduction. So really is the absolute premium creature to use to gather metal. The Dodicarus you'll be able to turn a little bit now on with all of the game and not just in the Genesis missions. And apparently the Bastis now has eyes. Yay, great. Snakes that can look at you. Now, a big, big feature that is really exciting, I can't believe it's taken this long, is UI for taming. You'll now be able to actually keep track of everything that's going on. This is great news. This puts it more in line with a lot of the benefits and other things we've seen in mods. Being able to show exactly what's going on, this really does give a lot of people more freedom and they can go and check on certain creatures. And yeah, it's a great, great addition to the game. It's got everything here, the distance, the health, how long it's going to take, the taming efficiency, everything you need to know, all in one spot. They're also increasing boss rewards, you're going to get more elements, changing turret radius settings, and that is all going live on the November the 7th. Of course, that is in addition to the Stegosaurus and the Mammoths getting revamps, completely added new abilities, and just a whole rework. 
So that's all coming on November the 7th. I will give you an update video the next day recapping all of the stuff that's gone down. They usually stream for about 24 hours, so I'll give you the lowdown, all the best bits from that stream if there's any reveals of Genesis 2. Now, of course, with the good is the bad. The Halloween event hasn't gone live on Xbox. It will go live tomorrow, and it's going to be going live at 8 p.m. in America and about 4 a.m. on Tuesday morning, which is ridiculous, but there you go. Ark have been doing that lately with Xbox updates. Big shout out to Jen from my Discord on my OG rap bags for helping out with some screenshots of the ghostly creatures that you can go and get. Of course, this is live on PlayStation and PC, so don't forget to go and take advantage of this event. The event is going to finish on the 6th November though. They're not extending it, even though there was problems with that Xbox. And it's just such a shame. Five years on, Wildcard still can't organise events on time. It's not like these events change every year. But uh, they're not even worth my ranting anymore. Let me know though how the updates have gone for you and if there are any substantial problems on either of them when they've launched come fully on the Xbox tomorrow. All right guys, Last Oasis is a game that I've been championing for all through the last five or six months or so. I thought it was a great game, it had its problems and issues, but I did have to move on because simply the views for it just weren't there and that showed as well because the player base started to dwindle. I even put it in my Dead Survival Games video recently but that isn't to say I don't think it can make a success in the future. I really want it to. Out of a lot of PV experiences I've played, I think this one's definitely the most interesting. Anywho, I've been covering all the little updates that go on. And I told you guys they've been adding a new beta branch. And this is going to have their big commerce update. This is the kind of stuff that a lot of PvE players were looking for. Ways to make it interesting, to make the game more viable, rather than just going around shanking everyone actually having people setting up trade routes and all sorts. we are going to have wandering merchants now where you'll be able to get unique trade orders, tablets and stuff. There's new quest systems and new auctions with the trading stations. And pretty much it's just a whole load of new work added to it. They've also added some new walkers. You'll be able to pack solid bases from now on. In the past there was only certain structures you could pack up. You'll also be able to damage walkers a little bit more easily now as well, pretty much by just bad driving. And they've added armoured and heavy legs for two of the variants, the Buffalo and the Hornet. They've also added armoured legs for the Stiletto 2. They've got a new event map, some new loot sites, the Ancient City. Added stone bases and buffed clay and concrete bases. And a whole bunch of other fixes. There's a lot to dive into here and I'm pretty much not going to try and do it in this video. But I'm definitely itching for going back in. So I think I'm going to take a crew of rat bags and we'll give it a try on the official servers at some point in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be on the beta servers for a while. I'm not expecting this to be turned around in the next two weeks. I think it will be on the beta branch for at least a month. But it's really cool looking at some of the new map pictures and stuff that's going on. It looks much more lush. And you can see this developer is just putting so much time and effort into this game. It just needs the players now. So hopefully this all adds a little bit more to do rather than just, as I said, going around and only raiding. You'll be able to do trading, more missions, and it's another viable way to play the game. Don't get me wrong, you're still going to get raided or attacked at some point, but it now gives players something to work towards. So yeah, definitely checking this out very soon. And that is pretty much it, a pretty packed video with all the big hitters from Survival. As ever, the home of Survival News will always deliver it to you as quickly as soon as possible as I can, and I will be, as I said, covering majorly the grounded content that's coming up in the next couple of days. Let me know what you're looking forward to most out of today's show. Is it Conan changes? Is it Ark, the TLC, DayZ, or maybe Grounded? Let me know in the comment section. Until next time, Ratbags, I'll catch you later.